Yeah, Florida State football front and center right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for the very best in college football coverage, analysis, discussion, debate with the likes of great media contributors like Kurt Weiler from Knoll Sports. And please join him there for Florida State football coverage. The audio versions on the typical platforms, uh, Google Play, Podbean, iTunes, and Stitcher. All right. If you scan the field, Kurt, both sides of the football, who would be the breakout players for you? And when I think breakout players, I either think about a decent player who's already getting playing time that could emerge to be a star, or maybe a guy in obscurity. Maybe he was redshirted, but the team needs him to step into a gap and, and fill a void. One guy that jumps out at me is uh, DJ Matthews. He's a wide receiver. He uh, played very limited last year, mostly after Jimbo had left in those last two games for the most part. He has really stood out so far in spring practice. We kind of knew his elusiveness, but he's really shown it. I mean, in the cat and mit, mat, mouse drills I was talking about, he had a couple plays that got kind of picked up actually by social media, and it got picked up by social media to the point where Lamar Jackson quote tweeted the clip of him juking these players saying that's wild. He's he's going to thrive both in Willie Taggart's offense and in the slot is especially. He's a tinier, more elusive guy who I think could have, I mean, a really, really strong. I mean, will be the big, biggest beneficiary of both a coach willing to play younger players and a coach who's in more of a spread offense. Kurt, I know that the uh, recruiting season's kind of in simmer mode to a certain extent. There are visits happening, so I'm going to leave this carte blanche wide open for you to address it in whatever fashion you'd like. If you want to recap 2018 and then look at 2019 and what uh, – uh, the situation looks like currently just uh, since Willie Taggart's taken over the what has caught your eye or been the difference on the recruiting trail. Um, I mean, it, what's amazing, truthfully, is that looking back at last year, this past class that just signed uh, Taggart staff was brand new, except for one coach. One coach remained on Jimbo Fisher staff now is now on Taggart. It's defensive tackles coach, Ilda Higgins, who's also the interim coach with that much turnover, Florida State still turned i think he and his staff turned what was like around like the early signing period like the 60th overall recruiting class which by florida state standards is i mean abysmal that's among the likes of i, I want to say even like a below a boston college like that's almost like bottom of the power five numbers two i think they ended up somewhere in the 11 or 12 rank class range i mean the takeaway from that was kind of if they can do that on this short time imagine what they can do with a whole year. Like they, this might be a type of staff with how strong of recruiters, how strong of personalities they are. They could kind of be among the, the big boys year in and year out as, as Jimbo Fisher's staff formerly was. And I mean, it, there's not a huge emphasis on recruiting right now. It's, I mean, it's a year round business, of course, but the bigger thing right now with them finally the chance to have these practices, I think they're really focusing. They brought in, a couple players, they brought in a kid who is a very highly touted quarterback, dual threat quarterback out of Connecticut. Tyson Fomachan is a big name, his name to know, kind of a guy who you look at as, I mean, a difference maker, potentially, if they're able to land him. The one real miss of that staff was that they didn't sign a quarterback, and they also lost another one to transfer. So they only have three scholarship quarterbacks on roster right now. So the biggest thing really is I would look for them to sign two quarterbacks next year. But outside of that, I, it, the, the first class accomplished really everything it needed to and then some. And I really think that it could be a really strong 2019 class. Kurt, this is the first time you've been on. As soon as you mentioned, I don't know what this says, but as soon as you mentioned the recruiting class at one point was ranked 60th and you said that's kind of like before you spit it out, I thought Boston College. So uh, I was right there with you in regards <laughs> to uh, the status of class, but we knew it wouldn't finish quite that. I think either one of us could do better than number 60 in the nation at Florida State. It has that kind of draw, but of course, Willie Taggart closed extremely, extremely strong. We're happy to be joined by Kurt Weiler from Knoll Sports. Uh, Kurt, uh, before I say goodbye, think about these questions, and if you'd like to take part in uh, these topics as we get into the slow period in May or June, best win since you've been a fan or covering the team worst loss most excruciating gut-wrenching loss uh and if you're a geek like me and you want to go top three or top five or top ten you can certainly do that i'm not going to nail you down to one uh favorite player currently favorite player all time 
best player currently, best all time. What would you change about the program? What would you change about college football? If you're college football commissioner for a day, what do you change? We just like to throw those around in the off season. Um, there's a couple of those. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, worst we'll, loss. We'll get to them sometime. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. Put you on the spot here. Uh, oh, I, well, I've got the worst loss. It was that Georgia Tech kick six game in Atlanta from 2015. Okay. I want to say sure. where Florida State had a field goal to win it, and it got blocked, and Georgia Tech returned it for a touchdown and won in the final play. I don't know if you remember that game. Oh, I remember it very well. Remember, oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. watch the game, but uh, if you were watching college football that night, everybody's then quickly zeroed in because the news was all over the place that watch what just happened. And, yep. uh, the, yep. the only thing uh, I would question there, and of course it's 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 an opinion poll, so there's no right or wrong answer, but uh, if Florida State wins that game, doesn't Clemson still win the division and win the ACC and go to the college football playoff? I, I guess I deter in that moment, I guess I interpreted worst as like most heartbreaking. Definitely. I mean, there's yeah, no right it, answer. It wasn't the most substantial loss. No, absolutely not. But, I mean, it, it was it was undefeated Florida State. And I, I'm of the belief that, like, a butterfly effect almost of where if that game plays out differently, the rest of the season plays out differently. So, I don't know. They hadn't played Clemson yet. That was the year they played them in Clemson and played them pretty close for about three quarters. And, I mean, that was the team that ended up losing to Alabama in the title game. So, it's uh, – I, I can definitely, as we get closer, I'm sure I have answers for some of those. Some of those I'll probably – steer clear of I don't really know if I want to pick a best or favorite player or anything like that just as trying to stay impartial I hear you but good stuff from Kurt Weiler from Knoll Sports uh breaking down uh Florida State spring practice for us and some recruiting Kurt we appreciate the time absolutely thanks for having me Mark